Yeah, I know, I just looked at Matt Powell like two videos ago. I swear this won't be my only content. I swear I'll talk about more stuff. However, I stumbled across this video of Matt that encompasses Matt pretty well, and actually has some stuff that I feel I can add my insight on. I won't bore you with explaining what Matt tries to do in this video, just prepare for maximum stupid as is custom with Matt Powell. And instead, I will show it to you right now. And the atheists, they always say, Matt, we don't really hate God because you can't hate what doesn't exist, Matt. I'm going to prove to you that they know he exists. Oh, are you, Matt? Proving God to be real is already such an issue for theists. And yet, here you are thinking that you can prove to everyone that atheists know your God exists? Call me crazy, but I think that's bullshit. What if I spent all of my time debunking fishing? What if I wrote a book against fishing? And I told you that there's flaws with fishing. I don't believe in it. Then you just prove yourself even more to be absolutely batshit insane. Fishing and God are not comparable in the slightest. Fishing is an activity that a large portion of our population participates in every single day. Your God is some sort of magical seer of all that cannot be demonstrably proven. I could prove to you that fishing exists regardless of the issues you may think it has but you have not been able to present any extraordinary evidence for your beyond extraordinary claim that your god is real. Wouldn't that mean that I hate fishing? Now the answer to this could differ from person to person, but I personally think that no, no, that would not mean that you hate fishing. I assume in this scenario, you're taking the position that you don't believe fishing exists and are trying to point out the flaws of the activity. This could simply be you showcasing what you think made you take that position on the existence of fishing, and while the points you bring up may lead you to believe that you hate the idea of fishing, I find it hard to say that you hate fishing itself, because not only do you not think it exists, but also, fishing may be completely different from what your initial idea of fishing was. Now let us take this back to your god. The god that you believe in, the whole concept of its existence, I find to be impossible. But regardless, the personality you describe it to have, I hate. I hate the idea of your god. I do not hate your god because it doesn't exist. Yes. If you spend your life and your whole YouTube career against something that you think is a fantasy, <laughs> it proves that you actually hate the thing that you're trying to debunk. Or that we're trying to demonstrate how it's impossible to exist and or why we do not take your precise stance on your god. I don't know, man. They both seem pretty convincing, so take your pick. Hey, Matt, quick question. Why do you always claim to know what is going on in the people's heads who oppose you? Is it so you can trick your audience into adopting that lie so it becomes a lot easier to make your opponent seem like an enemy? I won't be so bold as to say that is definitely the case, but I also won't lie and say they don't believe that to be his tactic. If I wrote books, right, against Jesus, and if I put out content against Jesus, said that the resurrection never happened, that means that I would hate Jesus in that case. Fellow skeptic creators, if you are watching this, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe most skeptic creators think that Jesus was an alright dude that simply isn't of much importance to them. Like, I'm sure there are people at my school that are decent people. I just don't care much for them. It's not that I hate them. Also, just because atheists and skeptics do not believe that Jesus was resurrected and defend their position does not mean they hate Jesus, especially because it's not Jesus himself who we think is lying. Like, there could be a rumor going around my school that someone is best friends with a celebrity, and just because I don't believe that doesn't mean I hate the person. To be completely honest with you, even if the person themselves lied to my face and said the rumors were true, I still wouldn't hate them. Matt. I am genuinely confused how you came to that conclusion, because it's either that you genuinely believe in what you're saying, or you're deliberately lying to your audience. Neither of those options are very good. And when they say the resurrection never happened, there's only two resurrections that you can choose to believe in. Disregarding the fact that people cannot choose to believe what they want, what's the other resurrection that you're talking about? Please don't let it be something immensely stupid like a supposed resurrection that atheists supposedly believe in. You could either believe in the resurrection that Jesus spoke of when he said that this temple will be destroyed. He says, you destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it again, speaking of his body. Okay, so number one is just Jesus' resurrection, which I had expected. Now I want to know why there are only two supposed resurrections that people can believe in. Could there not be people who believe in none of those resurrections? Or even people that believe in another resurrection that you failed to account for? Why are you trying to lump every single person into two arbitrary boxes? Or you could believe that every living life form. Oh shit, he's going to be talking about abiogenesis. Everybody brace yourselves for an avalanche of stupid. 
I want you to think about this. Every living life form resurrected itself from the dead millions of years ago from non-existence and non-living material. So which is it, Matt? Did they resurrect from the dead or did they emerge from non-life? Death and not living are not synonymous. And while, sure, death is always not living, not living is not always death. Similar to how every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Anyway, yeah, I believe abiogenesis is how the first living material originated on this planet, but that's not a resurrection. That's just life coming from non-life. That you and I and every other animal resurrected ourselves from the dead. What the hell? No, I don't believe in either of those options. None of us resurrected ourselves from the dead. We just started living. We weren't just dead and then suddenly we're alive. That's not how any of this works. You could either believe that Jesus resurrected or that all of us just came to life out of nowhere. Again, one, those aren't the only two options, and two, only one of those is a resurrection. Who are you gonna trust, folks? Definitely not you. You constantly misrepresent and misunderstand science whenever you try to talk about it like what you just did, so you've proven yourself to not be a reliable or trustworthy source. I'd much rather trust scientists who actually know what they're talking about. And to the people in the audience, I want to make this clear. Both myself and Matt are both equally qualified to make conclusions or assumptions about fields of science. The difference is I try my best to never misrepresent them. Would anybody here do a debate with me on the existence of Elmer Fudd for three hours? Would they do a debate on the existence of fairy stories and fairy tales? They say, believing in God is nothing more than a laughing stock to me. Then why do you debate on it? Because your religious views are constantly trying to infiltrate our government so that they can have control over people. This is a huge issue because your personal beliefs, what you wholeheartedly believe to be true, have authority over everybody, even people who do not share your faith. So you can prove your God to be true, and prove what he wants and why we should follow it, we will not even consider letting you take the power you so desperately want. Furthermore, even if you were able to prove that your God exists and prove that what you say is his word to actually be his word, why should I follow what he says? Why should he have any authority over me anyway? Comparing your god to fairies and s stories such as Lord of the Rings is beyond idiotic. Did you seriously fail to consider that you guys actually believe in your god and that dictates how you act, so comparing it to works of fiction for entertainment doesn't work? Nobody believes Lord of the Rings is a true story. It's just entertainment. Seriously, why are you so obsessed with talking about how fictional stuff is stupid? Because you know that god is legitimate enough to fight against. No. The problems that believing in your god causes are serious enough to fight against. I thought this was obvious. You know, deep down in your heart, that god is legitimate enough to have a battle with. I don't believe in your god, but if fighting over his existence is an effective way of getting rid of religion from politics, then sign me up! But I'm sorry, you cannot battle with fact. And you cannot battle with those who know fact. Matt, you small word. Big word hurt his head. Anyway. Matt, yes, we can debate over facts. You demonstrate this all the time by whining over the existence of evolution. Your god, however, is not a fact, which is the main reason why we say that they should not be used to oppress people. Look, even if neither evolution nor your god were real, at least real evolution isn't used to oppress people. Your god, the one you say is the one true god, is constantly used to oppress people. To me, there is a clear better option between the two. That's why at the end of these debates that I've, that I've done, what's the very first thing that the atheists all do when they lose? Holy shit! Does Matt genuinely think that he wins every single debate he has with atheists? Is he that dense? Is his ego really that big? Matt, just about everybody you debate wipes the floor with you, and just because you're too dogmatic to see it doesn't mean you win. You're just like Kent. You repeat talking points ad nauseum, even after being correct without a shadow of a doubt multiple times. You don't win these debates and you're just too stubborn to admit or realize that. What's the very first thing? They will light a joint on camera. They'll light a joint, which is extremely unprofessional. Oh, don't you grandstand on us, Matt. We all know how unprofessional you are. You're the most childish apologist I know. And honestly, so what, they smoke. Who are you to say they shouldn't? Isn't it their body so it's their choice? Them smoking isn't hurting anyone. Plus, it's a good way to lose the rage being built up from having to repeat the same correction to you over and over and over again. 
Talking to you is tiring, so we really don't blame them. Especially if it's after the debate, because who really cares at that point? You're just trying to pile up any little thing you can to make them seem less respectable. And they will sit back in their chair and start drinking alcohol, because that's their way out. Any form of escapism from the dreaded Matt Powell is acceptable in my eyes. That's their way into back into fantasy land to make them feel better. Oh no, 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 no. Please don't be going back to the whole atheist live in fantasy bullshit. Matt, this is what I'm talking about. Even after being corrected on this dozens of times, you still repeat the same crap. After taking such an incredible loss, and it shows that the statistics are true. It's not that I'm some great debater, it's that facts will always defeat fiction. Is that why evolution is on the incline, Matt? Facts always defeat fiction, right? So is that why more and more people believe in evolution every single generation? You're not a great debater, it's just that facts always defeat fiction. Hey, your words, not mine. That facts will always trump that which is an opinion. Like your favorite god? We don't care how much you love your god. While you're stuck trying to pleasure him, we'll be over here learning more and moving society forward. That fact is stronger than the way that they feel inside. And, you know, I, look, I've done several of these debates, and, you know, one of these atheists broke down crying. Look, I, I'm not in any way trying to hurt their feelings. You are the most dishonest person I know. What you're doing isn't to get people to believe in your God. If it was, then you wouldn't have to misrepresent and attack your intellectual opponents. Don't make me bring up that clip where you scream at an innocent man, threatening him with hell. It would be a shame if more people knew who the true Matt Powell is. You know, the bigoted, egotistical, dogmatic, trashy, lying piece of shit. I'm just trying to get them to wake up and realize that they were lied to. The irony is so thick, not even a knife could cut through it. In 1963, we saw some terrible things happen, right? The Bible was removed from the schools. Cry about it. The Bible has no place in education because it isn't science and is completely subjective. Keep your religion at home. And then Darwinian evolution was what it was replaced with. As I stated in the last video, the Scopes Monkey Trial was only 97 years ago, and it's still highly controversial. Evolution needs to be taught in schools, and it needs to be taught better. Evolution is science, and is demonstrable so it belongs in our education. Your feelings really don't matter in this situation. I really could not care any less about how you feel about evolution being taught in public schools. And they had replaced it with the origin of species. So they took the Holy Bible from the hands of the students and replaced it with the origin of species by means of natural selection. Nobody took their students' Bibles. Every student has the right to practice their religion as they should. All that happened is that we stopped teaching the Bible in a secular environment, and if you don't want to send your kids to school because they teach evolution there, then go fuck yourself. On the origin of species was not kicking God out. It was simply ignoring an irrelevant hypothesis. Honestly, dude, your personal spiritual beliefs mean nothing in education, and I'm sorry you were stupid enough to make it enough of your personality to get offended by that. The problem is what it caused, alright? Suicide rates went up. Premarital sex rates amongst teenagers went up. Uh, citation needed? What the hell, dude? This took one Google search. Religious folk are often the ones to plead not to teach their kids sex ed. Research shows that kids who were taught sex ed are often less likely to rush into sex and are often much safer during sex. And even if what you were saying was true, how can you prove that the increase in teaching evolution is at all affiliated with those statistics? Uh, premarital uh, birth rates also went up. Couples living together went up, drug abuse, child abuse went up. All of these statistics went up in 1963 when the Bible was taken from the schools. And here's a scary fact. It's because that the Bible says that all the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. I do not care what your Bible says. Stop taking shit out of your ass. Talk about a hell on earth when literally everything is going crazy. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Man, that's scary. It is scary, Matt. I wonder what fear could have to do with people's tendency to believe something. I'm sure fear is never used to prey on people. Oh, wait. But if my people, which are called by my name, will pray, seek my face, and humble themselves, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Why do I need to pray to your God? Isn't he supposed to be all loving? 
all-knowing, and all-powerful? Shouldn't he love me regardless of the, my tendency to pray to him, especially since he has not once shown himself to me, and so I cannot ever be certain of his existence? Doesn't he know how to get me to believe in him? Is he not able to get me to believe in him? It's because he has some supposed plan, and he can't interfere with my free will, isn't it? If that's your god, then I want nothing to do with him. We need to turn back to God. We need to get the Bible back in the schools, the Ten Commandments back on the wall, and God will start blessing, and these horrible statistics of death, suicide, and murder will lower. Name the Ten Commandments, Matt. I dare you. Make sure they line up with what everybody else considers to be the Ten Commandments. To my knowledge, nobody can agree on the commandments past the fourth, and even then, most of them are insanely unimportant. If that itself is such a challenge for you guys, tell me why we should bring the Bible back into schools. One condition. No Bible verses allowed. Oh shit, I knew it! He instantly follows it up with a Bible verse. Suck it, Matt. Your circular reasoning has no place in education. That's it from Matt Powell today. I went into this video with low expectations, but he always manages to impress me. It is impossible to underestimate him because he always manages to go lower. I hope I can get to making videos that do not involve Matt soon. Honestly, he is a gold mine of content, so I most likely will revisit him again. Hopefully a bit farther in the future next time. If you liked the video, then please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button, because it makes Happy Chemicals dance when you do that. Have a nice day!